work for. <laughs> Anyways, um, good evening everybody. My name is Robert Baird and um, tonight I'm here to talk to you about UAVs. I'm studying aerospace engineering here at Cal Poly Pomona and so this is something that's very interesting to me and that I was uh, excited to research and present about. Um, so I wanted to talk about how are UAVs better than manned aircraft. Uh, first of all, what exactly is a UAV? There's a lot of controversy and uh, misunderstanding about these aircraft out there. They're not something that just drives around all on its own. What it really is is it's an aircraft that's simply driven from the ground instead of in a cockpit. We eliminate the cockpit and place it somewhere else. We put the pilot then anywhere we want in the world and data link them to the aircraft. Uh, most commonly this is done by the Air Force out of uh, New Mexico or Arizona. But by removing the cockpit the pilot, we gain three key advantages over manned aircraft. Uh, the first advantage we gain is that by reducing the weight of the aircraft, and we not only increase the power to, power to weight ratio, which if you like cars, you'll probably know something about, but we also increase its maneuverability. Uh, this is uh, even more important in that by removing the pilot, we can do some things we couldn't do before. The average human can only withstand about nine times the force of gravity. Uh, and even that, more than a couple of seconds, will kill you. Modern aircraft are capable of throwing their operators around it, sometimes double or triple those kind of uh, Gs. By placing the pilot on the ground, instead of in the aircraft, we uh, remove this fallacy or problem in the aircraft, allowing, the, allowing increased maneuverability and speed. Uh, another, a, uh, another advantage is that another advantage of manned air, or UAVs over manned aircraft is that um, we don't have the human limiting factor, another human limiting factor, which is time. Uh, and if you've been on a long flight ever, you know, 8, 12 hours, it's extremely annoying. It's worse if you can't go to the bathroom or you can't get up, you can't move, you're stuck in the seat. This is, gener this is generally what limits manned military aircraft. The pilots can't operate the aircraft for more than a couple of hours. Usually they max out at about six. By placing, by using UAVs instead of manned aircraft, we can put the operator on the ground and if he gets tired, we we'll switch him out. If he has to go to the bathroom or go eat or wants to go home to go see his family, we can do that. It allows us um, a lot more flexibility among the crew and helps reduce some of the biggest issues in uh, mission, time on mission. Uh, this, the uh, extended time on station that, this, that UAVs give us also allow aircraft to better uh, observe possible enemy targets on the ground or uh, better search for survivors, uh, lost hikers, anything it essentially allows them to do their mission better. Um, the final and one of the most important benefits of uh, UAVs is that they help us pr protect the pilots. Um, have any of you guys seen the movie Behind Enemy Lines? It's a little old for you guys. Okay, he has. He's, he's the important one. Um, anyways, the, the movie follows this, the, uh, a naval fighter pilot as he shot down over Bosnia in one of the Bosnian conflicts. Uh, and this, the movie was actually based off the real story of an F-16 pilot, uh, pilot flying out of the lot. His name's Scott O'Brady, if you ever want to look him up. He uh, ended up being shot down over Bosnia and had to survive behind enemy lines, being shot at, sleeping in, out in the open for over six days. It was, it, uh, if you've ever read his book, it was rather harrowing. Um, but by using UAVs instead of manned aircraft, we retain all the benefits of having a human in control. Um, we're not having computers make these decisions. We're still having the human element, the human touch, but we remove the possibility of an aircraft being shot down and a loss of pilot, a um, injuries, which ideally is the ideal case. We really don't like hurting people or allowing people to be hurt where and when it's possible to remove it. 
Um, this is especially important in the modern conflict like Iraq and Afghanistan, since Bosnia surface air missiles, which you use to shoot down planes, uh, have grown even more complex and sophisticated, making them a, in, in even greater danger to modern aircraft, which has caused which caused significant operational losses in Iraq and Afghanistan enemy fire. By using UAVs, we are not placing these pilots in danger as they try and support our missions and help the people overseas and wherever the United States is uh, currently in conflict. Any questions? We don't really have time for questions. Well, it's better than saying I'm done. Okay. <laughs> there are a lot of things better than saying I'm done. Like, remind us what your proposition is. Uh, that UAVs are better than many aircraft. Great. That's better. Okay. Thank you. All right, in case you didn't know, I do do comments after each presentation, and I let the camera roll so your comments will be there. That's part of the evaluation process, and if you have trouble reading my handwriting, you shouldn't have any trouble hearing me on the video because I'm right next to the microphone. All right, Robert, uh, the uh, topic is clear. The proposition, though, at the beginning is phrased like a question. How are they better? It sounds like an informative speech where you're going to be outlining this rather than an argument that you're presenting. I think you need to do a little bit of uh, explanation as to why there is a conflict on this issue. It sounds to me like there are huge advantages. Does anybody deny that they are better? Does anybody suggest that we shouldn't be using UAVs? Uh, if there is a continuing need for manned flight, uh, maybe that would be the place that there would be a little bit of uh, competition on this argument and I it would be nice to know why there is a dispute here and why it is that we're having this particular argument uh, there's no preview of what the supporting points are going to be um, and I think that's a little bit problematic but in the body of the speech you do a very good job signposting the supporting claims so you always label the claims and that I thought worked uh, pretty well sometimes the phrasing on them is not uh, a declarative sentence it seems to be again another topic or a question uh, but you need to be be a little bit more specific about making that declarative statement like we talked about. Uh, the, um, it seems like there is a uh, rebuttal point that you're talking about when you mention the SAMs, um, and I think that that's uh, an issue that either could be a fourth point and make it a label or explain how it fits into that third point, uh, protecting the people. <coughs> uh, that would be helpful. The problem that I see, the biggest issue in the speech is that none of your sources are cited. Uh, you present information as factual data, which I don't doubt is true, but I don't have any reason to believe that it's true other than the fact that I trust you. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the amount of G's that a person can take, how fast a, a, an unmanned vehicle can fly, that's what you say. I don't know that that's true. I haven't heard any information about that. This is the very first time I've heard that. So I, I'm not saying that it's not true, but it would be nice if you could give me some data that confirms that. Uh, the proof on the second and the third points is mostly hypothetical examples. On the third point, your proof is a, um, you know, it's, it's an example that you've got a good story on that they made a movie out of. So I guess the real life example would be the uh, incident that you're referring to. So I think you get a little bit of credit for that. But outside of that, we're really dependent on hypotheticals. And we don't have testimony from people who've uh, used these UAVs. We don't have any information from the Defense Department or the Air Force that talks about how they uh, appreciate having the maneuverability that you talk about. Um, there's no, there's, you know, other other than the hypotheticals that you're talking about. I think that there isn't a lot of substance to the evidence. Now, I know that you didn't make stuff up, but uh, it's not being cited in the presentation. I do think you do a nice job speaking to the audience for the most part, and you seem to know the subject pretty well. So you're doing a good job building some credibility, and I think you do that at the beginning of the speech, explaining why it is you want to talk about this in the first place. All right, thank you very much for being